Release this together on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. You guys are radical on Wednesdays. Amen. Praise God. I just, I mean, on Sundays too, but man, I just, I feel that powerful hallelujah, man. It's like, this is uh, the uh, group that's out here to take care of the business. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word this evening. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, blessing us to be here this evening. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. All right. All right. Let's say this by faith. Say minister to me. Minister Holy, me. Ghost. Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what you need. Amen. You know, the Holy Ghost will minister to you at church, but also he'll minister to you right there at your house. He'll minister. You know what? He'll minister to you when you're driving in your car. You just got to be one that says, man, I want to hear what well, saith the spirit of the Lord. I'm looking for God to speak and I'm excited about it. Um, we are here on a Wednesday night and this is Faith Academy. And once again, I want to welcome everyone here and everyone at home. Uh, get your Bibles out make sure you're ready to go. Amen. And we're just going to dig right into this. Um, we're going to preach on this. Um, it's Faith Academy. So we're always preaching on faith, but we're going to preach this message tonight entitled Faith for Healing, Faith for Healing. And so these are just kind of um, fundamental things, you know, but what we believe in doing is is just making sure we cover all the basics so that people are strong, that they have a strong foundation. And, you know, if we learn and we really get an understanding, you say, Lord, I want to get revelation of these things. Well, revelation often comes through your meditation, right? You meditate and you utter it, mutter it. Well, sometimes, you know, we'll go over scriptures and all that. That's a form of meditation. And if you're one, if you're not, you know, I can't make you do it. But if you're as serious about this as I am, then you will start to listen to these messages more than once. Amen. Amen. And so I've been doing that for years. And the growth that I've experienced is, man, I don't think it can be quantified. Because it's something that, you know, you need to penetrate the subconscious mind. And so you need to penetrate the subconscious mind. So you need to learn how to get stuff in there. See, sometimes you can hear it. Maybe you're here live or you're watching online. You say, man, I finished the sermon. That was great. But it's not possible for you to grasp everything that was preached. And so you got to go back and say, let me hear that again. And so I do that with my own sermons. But still to this day, I listen to every sermon that my pastor preaches because I have to be fed. And so I've been doing this for years, but that's just a little uh, nugget that I, I would invite you to participate in because it's like that thing gets in your subconscious mind and it becomes real to you. So because we do give a lot of scripture and a lot of information, it is um, going to be um, very helpful to you if you take, you know, a, a, uh, a studious approach to this. Amen. All right. Praise God. So. Faith for healing. Let's go right to Exodus, Exodus 15, 26. And uh, I want to help us with this. Now, remember, everything we do is to get us somewhere. Amen. Amen. So like I'm not I don't God doesn't give me messages that are going to uh, encourage the people to be stagnant. And so what this means is. I'm one of those pastors, we've, we've often called this a training ground. And so this type of ministry will stretch you. It'll stretch you and have you go a little further than you've gone before because God is trying to get you somewhere. Amen. So it doesn't mean that, you know, you're a bad person if you're not in this great place. 
Well, praise God. None of us are where we are going to be. We're all trying to get better. But the way we do that is through the, the, the learning and of the word and, and taking it in. And so I have to be obedient and release what God says. So let's, let's read this Exodus 15, 26. So this is right after, you know, they, uh, God had delivered the children of Israel. They crossed the Red Sea, all these great things. The Egyptians were all, you know, taken out. They were chasing them. But let's, let's look at this. And this is what uh, a commandment that came forth. He said, and this is just picking up in verse 26. And he said, if thou will, and this is Moses speaking. He said, if, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And so we see that word if. We've been talking about that a lot in our series on the blessing on uh, Sundays. And this is a option, right? And so it's like God is saying, I'm going to do this. But you're going to have to do your part. And so he says, if thou will diligently, so diligently means to um, listen intelligently. So diligently hearken means listen intelligently. So listen with an intent to apply what you've just heard. Amen. How I many know when you're in a situation where you want to know what to do? Let's say you're in your job and you're being trained on a new software, a new system or something. Well, you are going to listen with some intent to learn. Amen. You're not going to just listen and hear words going forth. Sometimes that happens to people. The devil is trying to distract people so they hear words. So you might hear words and you'll hear tones and things like that, but you're not receiving instruction. And so you don't know how to actually put that into play. And so this is what he is saying. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right. Look at your name and say, you're going to have to do what's right. But how do you know what's right? Well, you got to listen to God. See, y'all in here with me? You got to listen to God. What's right is determined by God and not us. Oh, come on. See, we have missed it in our church today. I was talking about this with my kids and they were just, you know, we, me and my wife, we're used to calling it seeker friendly. But, uh, you know, my daughter had shared the, the other term, the progressive church. Well, you know, because for us, it's kind of like, wait, how do you say you're a Christian? But then you do this. Like for me, it doesn't compute. It doesn't like, you know, what I mean, it doesn't line up for uh, for a person to me. Doesn't make sense for a person to sing a love song to Jesus. But then now seeing something that is to the world and glorifying the ways of the world. That doesn't make sense. Well, there's that progressive Christianity out there that's, man, raging right now, which is, you know, just whatever. Say you love God, but there's no standards. Well, see, what they've been teaching about is not the God of the Bible. They've been teaching about some other God, but it ain't the God of the Bible. And so because he doesn't change. And so with God, we've got to always remember uh, the benefits are contingent upon our willingness to obey. There's no way to go. You can't go around this. You can't shortcut it. You can't. You have to do what God says. And so if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in whose sight. So man could tell you it's okay for you to drink and do this and do that. But what does God say? Come on, somebody. What does God say? You're not to obey God. Uh, you're not to obey man. You're to obey God. And so he says that if you will do that, which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commands. Amen. See, sometimes parents will talk to the kids but the kids not paying attention. Right. Our parents, we used to get a correction on that one. It's like your mom knew you wasn't paying attention. Listen to me. <laughs> but you know, nowadays it's just like people can hear someone else talking, but they, they're not paying attention. And so he's saying here, if you will give ear to his commands, so listen to what he's saying and keep all, look at your name, say all. all. So all his statutes now, he says, this is he's speaking for God. Now, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which uh, next verse 
I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals thee. Amen. I am the Lord that heals thee. So this is sometimes a scripture that people don't like to go to because it's somewhat challenging. Even me, as God took it to me, took took me there. I was like, whoa, because this one is kind of a tough one to grab. But we got to understand the nature of God. And so when you look at this with an open heart to receive what God is speaking. We see here that he is the God that heals. The disease was for the Egyptians, but the Egyptians were the adversaries. They were against God. And so we can get an understanding that healing is for those of us who obey God. Sickness and disease are for those who don't obey God. Anybody right here with me? But in our, our world today, that just seems too cut and dry. That, no, wait, that doesn't seem fair. Well, I'm just taking you back to the scripture here so we can get an understanding. That way we know where God's coming from and we can have our expectations be set based on the scripture. Amen. And so with this being said, the first step to healing is repentance. Now, when God dropped that in my spirit, I hesitated. I said, oh, Lord, whoa, hold on. Huh? (laughs) Because I already know how the church is resistant to that. Now, this does not mean if you have an illness that you're in sin. I'm just taking you all the way back so that you know where these things come from so that your expectations can be reset. Amen. And I'll show you how it all comes together. But the first step to healing is repentance. So this is not popular, but it is true because what happens is when I repent now, This gives me access to the healing virtue that flows in the blessing. Oh, come on, somebody. This gives me access. I mean, a healing virtue is just flowing like a stream. It's flowing like a stream in the blessing. But I have to obey God to get in that flow of the blessing. And so this repentance. So when I turn from whatever now, how do you know? You may say, well, man, I've been saved for a long time and and I don't I don't drink. I don't do these things. Like I said, just because see, we're in a situation where we're kind of in this generation that has come along. And sometimes we can be products of our environment. Amen. And so a lot of us have grown up in church, not really expecting healing miracles, not really expecting these type of things. We just kind of have grown up. Uh, dealing with stuff and being used to it. And, and, and it's just kind of the norm. Well, we need to have our norm be what the book is saying that our norm should be. This is what we have to do. Now with this, there is some, let me just make you real clear on some things. Sometimes you can have something like unforgiveness and people don't realize that that's sin. And so they say, well, you know what I have, um, I I don't do this. I don't do that. But maybe you have unforgiveness in your heart. Well, see, God is the one that knows what's in your heart. And what you want to do is become just just be emptied out before God. You need to meditate as a side note. Go meditate Psalm 139 and ask God to search you. Ask God to search you. And if there's anything in me, you know, you could have jealousy and not even know you got it. Oh, come on, somebody. You can have resentment. You can have bitterness. And let me tell you something. You might not want to hear this, but anybody who listens to me, you're going to hear the truth. Those things are blessing blockers and they will block you up and they will prevent you from getting your healing. Come on, somebody. They will block you up. If you got bitterness, you got, oh man, some people got a critical spirit, a critical spirit is going to keep sickness on your body. What? Yeah. Oh, I thought by his stripes I'm here. Yeah, but we've got to understand there is some steps that need to be taken. Now, so what you want to do is you make sure, bam, I don't have none of that. Now, this is a purification that God will take you through. But what I've learned in my life That the more transparent I am with God, 
the better off I am. And things work for me and not against me. But when I am in denial and when I am overlooking things, here's what happens. You will always tell on yourself. And so you will think I'm fine. I'm just so, you know, I'm good. I got this. And then a situation will come about. And then now what comes out of you in that situation is an indication of what's either right in you or what's wrong in you. Huh? So this is you could be one that said, well, I don't smoke. I don't drink. But are you easily agitated? Oh, come on, somebody. Are you very are you somewhat short on patience? Oh, I see. I don't know if the church wants to be helped. I just it just seems like the church sometimes say we just OK, Pastor. We just going, you know, we'll just take it like this because all that stuff you teach a man, that's going to make me make too many corrections. Well, sometimes people don't want breakthrough bad enough. But I, I want it and I want the church to get it. And so if there's things that's in there that can be blocking you up. Once again, I, man, I'm, you know, I pay my taxes. I do all this stuff. But, hmm. Are, do you have a critical spirit? Do you, are, do you find yourself uh, being somewhat judgmental of others? Y'all all right if I, if I tell you. And you say, well, well, what's that got to do with it? I'm trying to get you in this blessing. I'm talking about where healing virtue is just flowing so freely. It's just flowing so freely. But God is not playing. And pe folks been lying to get the churches filled up. And so they having people think that they can do whatever they want to do. But the problem is they're not walking in the blessing They're not walking in God's goodness. Why is God's goodness not in full manifestation? He says, I am the Lord. I change not. He's still a good God. He wants to bless you abundantly. Amen. Now, this, this is listen, this is not hard. This is a matter of dying to self. When I die to self, I'm telling you, God will correct me so quick. And I repent. You know, but wouldn't it be a shame? It's just like, you know, when you have bad breath and, and you're the only one that doesn't know. You know what I'm saying? You just, you don't know. Breath is humming, but you just, hello, how you doing? Everybody's like, whoo. Well, don't you want to know what's going on? Don't you want, wouldn't you want God to tell you like, hey, that attitude is, I don't like that. Wouldn't you rather find out about that so that nothing has to get in the way of what he wants to do for you? So when messages like this come out, just take them and say, OK, all right, well, let me, you know. And so the first step to this healing is repentance. People got a lot of mindsets. They got a lot of ways that they've been stuck in for years. Oh, man, y'all. Mm, Lord. They've been stuck in mindsets and attitudes and ways they've been dealing with for years. And sometimes. They're you know what? They've had stuff on them for years. They haven't been able to put that together. Amen. And so let's let's just be pure before God so that we can get everything that God has for us. And so he says, I'm the Lord that heals thee." So we know that he is the Lord that heals us. Healing is not only the will of God. Here's another point that we got to deal with. Some people wonder, man, is healing. Is that the will of God? Well, we can't question that. Amen. Healing is not only the will of God, but it emanates from his essence. Yes, yes. It emanates from his essence. So we're talking about this is God, man. This is like if he just were to step by. I mean, there's healing just flowing all just healing virtue just everywhere. You come on, man. I'm going to share some things with you tonight, but. You, you guys already know the woman with the issue of blood. All she, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. He didn't even have to go look at her because it was just flowing. The healing power was just flowing all over him. And so we know it's his will because it's part of his nature. How could something that's part of God's nature not be in his will for you? 
He says, I am the Lord that heals thee. And so it emanates from his essence. Go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17, 14, Jeremiah 17, 14. Word of God says, heal me, O Lord. And then what does that say? So that's not a might. Amen. So we take the might out. So we say, well, um, if it be your will, Lord, please heal me of this. Well, how many know that's a different way of praying right there? Heal me and I shall be healed. Now, this is obviously before Jesus came and all that, but this is man. Heal me and I shall be healed. Save me. Now, look at the two of these. Heal me and I shall be healed. Some people have problems with that, but the next part says, save me and I shall be saved. Well, how many, most of the people that are saved, they don't doubt their salvation. They don't go around every day saying, am, am I saved? I wonder if I'm saved. Uh, I don't know if I'm saved. No, most of the time they're like, I'm, I'm going to heaven. I don't care what nobody says. I know I'm going to heaven. Well, you got to get the same way about your healing. You got to feel the same way. You got to feel the same conviction that heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Because now this is important because the enemy will try to put stuff back on people. Come on. So there have been people that have come up and actually been healed in a service. But by the time they got back home, that thing started creeping back on them. Now, it wasn't that God took it away. It was that they didn't have the foundation they needed. And so the enemy came back on them. Amen. But when you're convinced. Y'all know I'm healed. I'm already healed. This, this ain't coming back. And it, he didn't say he might heal me. He didn't say he was going to give me. Come on, somebody. He wasn't going to give me a healing that lasts for a week. This, that right there, I gave you a one week's healing. Come back next week and you'll get an additional week. You got to take that out. Amen. He says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved for thou art my praise. Amen. All right, let's go to another one. Psalm 107. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you somewhere tonight because your expectations have to change. We're, we're going to get out of this. I'll show you, man. In the early church, this stuff was expected. I mean, I don't even, you know. And once again, we're dealing with, uh, we're somewhat, you know, uh, we can be, I don't know, how can I say this? The, the product of our environment, so to speak. So the church as a whole, we can't just be this church right here and we're the only ones doing certain things. We need other people to be doing the same, the right things as well. Because there's a uh, residual impact, if you will, on the church. Why? Because people are impacted. I mean, oh, there are different mindsets. You can go talk to someone that um, goes to another church and maybe they're not teaching what we're teaching and their faith is not where it needs to be. Well, if you keep hanging out with them, that affects your faith. Well, we need this thing to be spreading out far like the simple truth where the whole church imagine this when the whole church comes in expecting a miracle healing instead of just one or two people but i'm talking about the whole church see that's where god's taken us and so this is our mindsets have to change and we have to have a higher expectation we got to expect these things and we're going to expect it based on what we know about our god so look at this psalm 107 20 he sent his word look at your name and say healing is in the book okay he sent his word and what healed them this is not even laying on of hands this is just he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God is in the business of healing and delivering people. Boy, this will mess up some of this stuff because some people today feel like they have to have uh, specialized ministries. 
which I'm not speaking against it, but I'm just teaching you the word. They have specialized ministries. Well, this is a healing ministry. This is a deliverance ministry. This is a, but how many know Jesus is the healer and the deliverer? Amen. How about we just focus on him and he'll do all the healing. He'll do all the delivering. He'll do all the providing. He'll do everything if we can just teach people to focus on him. We don't have to have so many specialized anointings to where you got to go to that church over there if you're going to get delivered. But the Bible says you can call upon the name of Jesus. Anybody who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. That word saved comes from the Greek word soteria, which means made whole, delivered. All that kind of stuff is all in one. Amen. Amen. So I don't have to go to a deliverance ministry to get delivered. I can get delivered in my car. Uh, so he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. All right. Let's look at Matthew now. Matthew four, Matthew four. I want you to get this. These are just scriptures backing it up. And Jesus went about all the Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. So I want you to see the connection between preaching and healing. See, sometimes people just want to pray for healing, but they didn't give no scripture. You need some scripture. You need the word. The word must be preached. You must learn the word and understand the word. Healing. And then he, he, he was preaching the gospel and healing all manner of sickness. Look at your name and say all manner. So what does that mean? So sometimes today people only believe for healing if they're on their deathbed. Why? Because they got nothing else they can believe. They say, well, I, I better believe for healing now. But how I many you know you're supposed to believe God for healing if you got an ache? I'm talking about anything. You're not, you're not supposed to say, oh, well, that's, you know, it's not that bad. It's just a, a little limp. No, you're supposed to believe God for healing because he said he healed he went around healing all manner. What's that mean to you guys? All manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. This is what he was doing. Why? Because this is the character. Now we're talking about Jesus when he was on the earth. But we know that, you know, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, these three are one. And so this he has that same healing virtue. Just flowing from his very presence. But what is the expectation in the people? And that's what we've got to deal with because the expectations in the church have been contaminated. And the only way to get our expectation level back up is we must learn the truth. And we must get away from everything else that is not the truth. Amen. Just because people's faith level has changed doesn't mean that we stop believing in healing. That, that's the people's fault. That's not God's fault. God said, I didn't change. Well, but my people don't believe for healing no more. What happened? Well, people aren't getting healed. Well, why is that? It's not that God's not healing people. It's the church ain't following instructions. The church is so busy about all this hyper grace and all this stuff. I guarantee you, the folks that's preaching hyper grace aren't preaching healing. They're preaching healing. If it happens, it's like a crapshoot. If you get healed, you get healed. If you don't, well, you know what, what? What do they always say? Well, I guess, you know, the Lord needed to take them home. What? Huh? That ain't in the Bible. That is not in the Bible. God does not need to take people. But if, if, if our belief has changed, if our expectation has changed, amen. But if we just stick to the truth, man, he was healing everything. So we ought to be those people who say, man, psh, I'm going to be healed of everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Amen. You, you could be, I mean, I've, listen, I'm telling you, man, I've experienced this. But now I've learned how to follow instructions. See, I don't do what the common person does. If I have an ache, I don't announce it. Come on. I have an ache. I don't I don't announce it. 
because I'm not going to glorify the problem. Now, because of where I've gotten myself in my life, I once again, uh, even people somehow, because I get so close to this truth, sometimes people are offended by the truth and they want to find some fault in me. But when it's the truth, you can't find fault in me. If I'm telling you to do something that is in accordance with the word and you are upset with me, you can't find fault in me because, see, what I've done is I have prioritized my life to where I must obey God. Amen. Not I might. No, I must. In all areas of my life, whatever he tells me to do, I must do it. That is where I am. And I've been that way for years. Well, as a result of that, I will listen. So I have a pain. Then I listen to what the Holy Spirit says. The flesh says, hey, man, this hurts. Tell somebody. But the Holy Spirit says, lay hands on yourself. Speak in tongues. Uh, now, I'm teaching you what the word says about God healing you, but there's a transition. There's a process that comes about in the life of the believer where now we began to walk in authority, delegated authority, the same authority that Jesus has. He will delegate it over to you. And so we would see Jesus in the Gospels casting out sickness. Amen. We would see him commanding health and different things like that. Well, now we're in that place where we can do that if we would be in him. But here's one thing with Jesus. There was never a question in regards to his allegiance and obedience to his God. Amen. There was no questions. Amen. Amen. Even when he went in there and turned over the tables in the temple. Yes, he was aggressive. But that was a righteous anger, meaning that was an, appro an approved anger, approved by God because they were turning the house of God into a den of thieves. And so people uh, misunderstand it. See, you can be passionate and fiery and righteous, but make sure your cause is the cause of God. And if it is the cause of God, you don't have to apologize. Amen. And so Jesus was was not playing. He wasn't, you know, boy, man, if Jesus showed up at one of these progressive churches, that's not preaching his word. Can you imagine what's what that scene would be like? That ain't going to be no, um, you know, what Jesus loves. No, no. Mm -mm. He's going to be setting them up for that Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Yeah, you've done all this stuff, but you don't even know me. I don't know you. Amen. And so he is healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. This is what he was doing. Now, let's look at this message. I want to help you with this because this is just powerful stuff. So from there, he went all over Galilee. He used the synagogues for meeting places and taught people the truth of God's word. Um, of, God, of God's kingdom. God's kingdom was his theme. This is what he's talking about. That beginning uh, right now, they were under God's government, a good government. He also healed people of their diseases and of the bad effects of their bad lives. Stop right there. Pause. Just right there. We just that right there is something. Because. He healed people of the diseases, right? So see, it's not about, oh, why do I have this? Or where did this come from? I've been trying to tell you guys, you don't have to worry about all that. Just repent, make sure you're not in sin, but then now start receiving what God tells you. God's going to tell you how to start speaking of that thing. He's going to tell you how to start walking in expectation. See, some people don't expect to be healed because somewhere down, deep down in there, they don't think they deserve the healing. Come on, somebody somewhere deep down in there. They just they don't expect it on that level. Well, he healed people of their diseases and 
of the bad effects of their bad lives. So somebody could have been a smoker, but they can get healed and they don't have to die of lung cancer. Come on, somebody. I'm just, man. Oh, oh Lord. Come on, because this is in his nature, like this is what flows from him. So what the religious folks say is, well, you know what? It's almost like everybody had it coming. Well, I tell you, if I would have got what I had coming, I wouldn't be here. So we all understand that when it comes to sin and heaven and hell. But sometimes we can't tie it together with healing. Amen. Like I said, a person could have been a smoker for years, got healed because, well, they got saved, repented, got under the blood. Mm, man, this thing is so powerful, man, because this is if this is in God's nature, he wants this for his people. And so there will be no trace of your bad life. Amen. So. You don't have nothing coming no more. Come on, somebody. You don't have some bad payment coming. See, people often think, well, you know what? That was a bad life and, you know, so I can't. See, if you think like this, listen, if you did some, some things that were against the law, or you did some other things, you're never going to expect true wealth. Because you're thinking in the back of your mind, man, you did too much wrong to get all this good. But if you know you've been washed clean, if you know that there is no trace, then now your expectations are reset. Amen. And now you start to expect based on your God's character traits and not your own failures and shortcomings. You start expecting not based on what you can do, but you start expecting based on him. Amen. And so he healed people of their diseases and of the bad effects of their bad lives. And so no matter what you have done, Luke's your name said, it don't matter what you've done. See, this ought to be the message. See, now this is about forgiveness, but this is about, and I'm going to teach you here, this is not something we just keep telling the same person. Like, last Sunday, you were forgiven. Doesn't matter what you did, you stepped up in that blood. Listen, when you step in there and you step in the blood, now the old Jew's supposed to be washed away. You're not supposed to step in the blood and then make a U-turn and go back to the club. Come on, somebody. That, that's not how this works. You're not supposed to step in there. So what people do is they preach about, you know, God will forgive you and get you, get you to heaven. But if you walk through and you got cleansed, but then you go back around there yourself and you go back and get dirty again. Well, guess what? Now you're back to where you've been delivered from. And you know what the devil will do? He'll welcome you back. And your expectations will be set based on that. And so now all you're going to expect is just grace. I'm just, well, you know, at least I'm still going to heaven. Are you really? Amen. So if you would receive this forgiveness, it doesn't matter what you have done, man. You can step into a new way. And so no matter what you've done, you can step into the power of the blood and receive healing. Come on, somebody. You can step into the power of the blood and receive healing. Don't matter if you used to be this whatever. You were all crazy, did all this type of stuff. You can how many know we know this is true because God did a wonderful work in the Apostle Paul. Also, Peter. Amen. But it's about stepping into this power. Now, once again, let me make it clear. This is not. Step in there. People can come to the altar, cry, and they have a truly repentant heart. But then go back to Egypt. Well, guess what? You go back to Egypt, you get what was given to the Egyptians. 
sickness and disease and all this stuff. But if you would stay in that place where I'm washed by the blood. Now you can expect things to change. Look at Acts, Acts chapter three. Acts chapter three, 19. So he says, here's that word. So we started this sermon with the first step to healing is repentance. Well, you know, they don't like using the word repent in churches anymore. So they probably are not really emphasizing healing either. Amen. And so he says, Acts 319. So repent. Y'all in here with me. Got to turn away. Oh, pastor, I don't, you know, do you guys, man, that just seems too rigid. Listen, to me, it seems too good to miss out on. To you, it might seem too rigid. But to me, I have been able to focus on benefits. And what I gain is much greater than anything I lose. There is nothing in the world that I used to have that I want today. Amen. Amen. But the devil will trick people to make them think that that old life was better. You had more fun. You had this, you had that. Or he can trick people to think that, well, you don't really have to change. God loves you anyway. You can stay that same person, be the, have the same attitude, you know. But we want to get what God has for us. And so he says, so repent, change your mind and purpose. So your mind and your purpose has to change. Amen. So now I'm on a new path. I'm on a new path. I'm doing something new. So if my mind was on wickedness and my purpose was to fulfill and gratify my flesh and do wicked things, I got to change that. Amen. So change your mind and purpose. Turn around and what? Return to God. Turn around and return to God that your sins may be what? Man. Wouldn't you guys want that? Would you want to learn about how you can get your sins erased? Or would you want to learn about how um, even though you sin, God's grace is sufficient and you know what? He'll give you a pass. Which one would you want to learn about? Because look, look at this. If I'm going to give you a pass but you're still labeled a criminal. You're still a criminal. That's why people who have uh, messed up and had to do jail time or whatever, at some point they want their record. Y'all in here with me? They want that record to be expunged. They want that off. Why? Because if it's not off, how many know they're still labeled? And so now all of a sudden they go to get a job, but they're still labeled. Amen. You are a felon. Yeah, but I already did my time and I've been released. Yeah, but you're still a felon. Amen. And so when you just hear about God's grace and all that stuff, oh, you may be forgiven, but you're still labeled. And so guess what? You don't claim nothing. Come on, somebody. You don't claim nothing. You're not walking as a citizen of the kingdom. You're not going to go in and, and demanding things. You're not going to speak and, and command sickness to get off your body. You won't do all those things because you're just still in that place of being forgiven yet again. But when you step into this. Repent. Change your mind and purpose, turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased. So if it's erased, I can't do it anymore. Amen. Come on. If I used to go off and cuss people out when I wasn't saved. And I still go off and cuss people out and I'm saved. Hmm. Hmm. If I used to smoke weed and drink and, and do all that stuff when I wasn't saved. And if I still smoke weed and drink and I'm saved. Hmm. What's really going on? 
Amen? Now, a lot of people wasting time. They don't like me telling them. I say, just, oh, man, just go ahead and live it up at the club, man. Don't worry about no church. You just stay on out of here, man. Go on in there and get your full experience at the club. Then maybe you come to the end of yourself and you realize you truly need help. The only reason I think that Christians try to uh, stay on both sides of this thing is because they don't realize the true benefits of salvation. When you realize that the kingdom of God is so much greater than anything this world has, then now you're not willing to compromise. You say, oh, no, I got to go all in on this, man, because this right here is the best. This is the best. See, it's not about us missing out. This is about what we gain. What we gain is so much greater. It is so much greater. And we are just scratching the surface. God is trying to get us into the place where, man, we could even start thinking stuff in it to manifest. Come on, somebody. I can't even teach this high yet. What? He's trying to get us into that place. Amen. Supernatural. Supernatural stuff. The only way supernatural or something happens, you know, in the earth that way is, is somebody got to attach, uh, attach themselves to some witchcraft. But when you're in the kingdom, supernatural is all the time. I'm telling you, man, those uh, magicians and all them stuff, they were nothing compared to what God was doing through his people. Matter of fact, in Daniel, he, he talks about how God made the uh, Hebrew boys 10 times smarter than the smartest people in, in the king's, you know, place. Amen. 10 times more. How could they be 10 times? Because it's supernatural. This stuff is coming from heaven. We would be like my wife was saying up here. We will be in that place if we just continue to flow with God. We'll be in a place where we will know how to invest in stuff we know nothing about. And get a kingdom return on it. Because we're <laughs> this thing is so powerful. Amen. Because because we're not playing. See, we've said, oh, no, what I have to gain is too good. And so I'm not going to play no games with this. So I see I don't get into debates with people. Sometimes people like to say, well, it's OK. We can drink a little bit. See, I just don't have time to waste on that. Other people may have time for that. They may have time to waste time on that. I'm trying to get nuggets from heaven. I, I ain't got time to be trying to worry about sipping on something. I want to get a download. Amen. I'm talking about I'm trying to walk in supernatural power in the earth. I don't want to be in a debate with somebody over, you know, drinking a drink. I, I, that's lower level. See, that's the problem. The devil has tricked people. Amen. What do you think is better? Walking in supernatural power to where people are getting healed just because you went over there and stood next to them. Or you being able to go to the wineries from time to time. I'm, really? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Amen. So repent, change your mind and purpose. Turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean. That times of refreshing. Look at this of recovering from the effects of heat. So anything that could have uh, brought damage to you. Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. I told you guys maybe somewhere along here that you won't even have a scent of 2020 on your life. If you do what I'm telling you to do as your pastor, you won't have a scent. Nobody will even know you went through anything. And this is what God has, a a time of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air. It may come from the Lord, from the presence of the Lord. This is coming from him. Now, in the early church, repentance was preached. This is what the book of Acts is, the early church. You know what? Repentance was preached. And so today we're not saying that, oh, man, you know what? You're not as good as me, so you're bad. I'm telling you to ask God to search your heart. I'm not the one that can search your heart. You ask God, Lord, is there anything in me? Now, we are all a work in progress. So what does that mean? 
you are probably going to find out things that need to be corrected almost every day. But because you have a willingness to only please him, you will find yourself getting better and better and better every single day. Well, as you do this, you're getting closer to God's way and God's power. And now you become a candidate of this refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. You come, man, I'm telling you, this thing is so powerful. See, people, sometimes they have old sports injuries. Well, how I many know just because you play sports don't mean you got to keep that. You can be healed. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, you know what? I used to be in gymnastics. And so that that's why my back's messed up today. Don't have to stay messed up. I gave you scripture in here where it said you can be uh, now having being in gymnastics is not a bad life. But it even said that the, they would be healed from the bad effects of their bad lives. So if you could be healed from living a life of sin, surely you can be healed of an injury that you had just from some, you know, doesn't mean you're like in sin when you got that injury. But we've got to just see the magnitude of this. I don't have to keep anything. I can be healed of everything. Amen. Nobody. They, they say that we have to accept things, but the book doesn't say that. Right. What needs to change is our expectations. How high can I believe? What can I believe for? Uh, Lord, show me there's a greater way. And now in the and once again, now. In the early church, repentance was preached, so healing was expected. I want you to get that. Repentance was preached, so healing wasn't hoped for. Oh, come on. In today's times, people are hoping that the Lord would heal them. I told you, he's taking us somewhere. He's taking you to the place where healing is expected. Amen? Not hoped for. So he says, or I'm, I'm saying in my notes, in the early church, repentance was preached. That's what happened in Acts chapter three. Repentance was preached. So healing was expected. Let's look at Acts five and we'll close on this scripture. But you've got to just see this. Acts five, 14 through 16 in the King James. And so and this is is just powerful. And, the, and believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth sick, the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the at least the passing of, of Peter's shadow. This if man, you think about this now, they've been preaching repentance. So healing was expected. And so what they would do is go out and, and, and preach, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Turn from your sins. And then now, let's get you healed. Oh, come on. Come on, man. See, it wasn't just repent and let's wait on heaven. No, repent, turn from your sins. And let, come on, let me get you healed up real quick. Let's bring your family over here. Come on, let's get healed. Why? Because... Healing was expected. But the reason it was expected is because repentance was preached. So when repentance is preached, then pretty soon healing will be expected. Healing won't be hoped for. Oh, Lord, please heal them. Healing will be expected. And so you know that this is happening in the body because now they are bringing. So the believers were added. The people were added. But as they are added, they are bringing folks. And I believe there was some ministering. Amen. I believe there was some ministering going on. And folks were getting saved, turning from their wicked ways. And I believe these guys were saying, now let's get you healed. And so... They were bringing them, but they believed that if, if the back, back this up real quick, please. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Not anything about 
Peter laying hands on him. Wait, wait, let me just get you. I'm going to put you right. Wait, wait, where's the sun? OK, we're going to put you right here. Now, that is expectation. What, don't you agree? That's the expectation. If you take somebody and just get them to where the shadow. What should we be expecting at this time? God didn't change. But you know what left the church? The word repentance. They're not pre they're just saying, come over and get Jesus and live a better life. No, we need to be introducing. We need to start out saying, repent. <laughs> and now let's get you healed. We don't need to say, let's get you healed. And then maybe God will do enough good stuff for you. And then you realize how good he is. And then maybe you'll serve him. That's the wrong way. That's why healing isn't expected today. I'm talking about overall in the church. I believe that people can just be getting healed in their seats. They can just walk and step out into the parking lot of a church and get healed. But see, the expectation has to change amongst the believers. We've got to believe that God's going to do this because we're obeying his word. We're following the steps. He's going to start to do this and he's going to do it in massive amounts. It's an atmosphere. Amen. And so they put them there, believing that the shadow's going to pass over them. Next verse. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. Wow. This belief level is so high. This thing is so high. They're like, look, I bet you people saying, man, this, this, I know what's wrong with this. This kid got a devil. Bring him here. <laughs> In today's times, people are afraid of that stuff. They say, uh-huh. I ain't trying to do all that. Amen. Because, you know, the, the devil know how to manifest. He'll have somebody shaking and foaming and all that. If you're not confident in what you're doing, you say, well, we, we need to get them to the doctor. That demon don't need no doctor. That demon needs to be cast out. But it can't be cast out if we don't know who we are. Amen. And so they brought all these people. But look at this. And they were healed. How many of them? What? Every one of them. Are we expecting on that level? See, you guys see where God has taken us? To where we would have that expectation. Lord, I'm going to teach the truth. That's why I do what I do in this ministry. I don't do it to build friendship. I do it to make disciples. Because friends don't always get what God has for them. Because friends get comfortable. Friends get comfortable amongst each other. And they start to realize, hey man, you know, we're just on the same level and all that type of stuff. You've got to be in that situation where you can receive because the anointing flows from the top down. So you've got to be in that place where you can receive that and then now you're willing to apply. You're going to say, I'm going to apply these instructions. And now we can have an atmosphere that will be set so high and we won't be in that place where uh, we feel like people are you know, gracing us with their presence. And they're doing us a favor by showing up to church. Mm -mm. The anointing will be so high that people will say, I've got to be there. I cannot miss that. There is something going on there that I've never felt before. And this is God's presence. And this the anointing flowing and then things start to manifest. And then now we start getting results. Amen. Amen. And so everyone was healed. I'm talking about a de demons getting cast out. And, and they didn't go over there and pray and speak in tongues over the devil. And I'm going to cast you out. They just said, this is the shadow. This, see, because that's the presence of God flowing so freely. So God is setting us up for this, church. Not only will you receive your healing but you will be a conduit 
to where God's power will flow through you and you will have such excitement and such high level belief that you will believe God will do the same for others. But then the Holy Spirit will always remind you. Don't forget about the one word that starts with an R. Because <laughs> we'll, man, we'd be glad to invite some people into healing and all that stuff. But you got to get glad about saying, uh, look here, man, you're going to have to repent. <laughs> like what? Yeah, you're going to have to repent. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to leave all that. Okay, you're not ready to get what God has for you then. So me and you may as well stop wasting time. Amen? That's just the truth of the, of, of the word. Amen? When we do that, now we can expect. Let's expect God to do bigger and bigger things. Your faith for healing is really going to uh, skyrocket because it's going to change just from a hope and a distant thing, it's going to be an expectation because you'll see that you've obeyed God's steps and you'll see that these are now my rights. So what you know as a right, you don't treat a right the same way you treat a benefit. Amen. So a benefit to you is that, you know, maybe you can go into someone else's house. They invite you in. That's that's beneficial. A right is you got your key. Oh, come on, somebody to your house. You don't go in your house like you're a guest. You go up in there. Huh? And if some main in line in your house. That's where God's taking us. See, we're going to start acting because we know our rights. And not just having little benefits here and there. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us tonight. We thank you for meeting us in this place. We thank you that your word went forth. Oh, we thank you that healing is a part of our new covenant rights. Oh, we believe it and receive it right now. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would help us all to be empty vessels, not holding anything back, but completely transparent, completely poured out before you, that you would mold us and shape us, that every thought, every action, every word would be pleasing in your sight. Oh, we thank you for that. As a matter of fact, we repent of any wrongdoing right now. We turn away from it. We turn our faces to you and we acknowledge you as our master. You're not just a savior, but you're our Lord and we follow you wholeheartedly. Maybe you're watching this and maybe you've never come to that place where you're officially at the end of yourself, where you've said, I'm not going to do it my way any longer. We want to let you know that there is that open invitation still there for you and Jesus is inviting you to come in and if you do this you will be blessed he won't force you but if you say yes he will surely help you and, and bring his presence into your life so church let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord Repeat after me, Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Praise God. I believe souls are coming in to the kingdom. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's get ready to walk out of here in power. We have obeyed the Lord and completed our assignment for this evening. And so I want you all to receive it and let God just continue to cause his power to grow in you. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you, Lord. As we leave this place, we ask that you continue to go with us, Lord. Talk to us, minister to us. Speak to us in a very personal way. 
And we ask, Lord, that you would also continue to surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen.